the channel thanks for watching and thanks to all our subscribers if you haven't subscribed please consider doing so so you don't miss the videos coming up today we're going to look at tear it up one of my favorites by the johnny burnett rock and roll trio and this one features the enigmatic guitar playing of mr paul burleson now paul burleson was of course the original guitar player in the rock and roll trio but he was usurped when they they got to Nashville and they were in Owen Bradley Studios because the way it was in those days, the session musicians were employed to, to back up the singers. So poor Paul Burleson didn't actually play too much on this album, but he did play on Tear It Up. And Tear It Up was recorded at the Pythian Temple Studios in New York City in May 1956. On that track, Paul Burleson was playing lead guitar Dorsey Burnett was the upright bass player and backing vocals. Eddie Grady was on drums and of course uh, Johnny Burnett was on the vocals. And uh, what they, they did after they'd done that session, they, they went to Nashville because they felt they needed a bit more rockabilly kind of vibe on, this, on the record. It was a little bit too clean. Anyway, uh, I think Tear It Up's a fantastic song and its influence down the years is very significant. So worth looking at, folks. I'm going to show you the rhythm parts first, just on the acoustic guitar. Then I'm going to show you all the, the lead guitar parts uh, and break it down for you. Okay folks, let's get rocking. Hi folks, Tear It Up is basically a 12 bar blues in the key of E. You're going to need to know the E chord, which I'm sure you know by now. Open, 2, 2, 2, 1, open, open. A chord, open on the A, 2, 2, 2, open. And I use the B7 generally when I'm playing acoustic guitar, which is 2 on the A, 1 on the D. 2 on the G, open B, 2 on the top E, but you can also use the B chord, the bar chord, which is 2 on the 2nd fret of the A and a bar up to the 2 on the high E and then you're putting your ring finger on the 4th fret of the D, G and B. And it basically just goes round, round like this. And I'm just playing a kind of bass strum. Now you might just put your pinky on to the second fret of the B just to jazz it up a little bit. It goes to A. Come on, little baby, let's tear that dance floor back to E. Up. Come on, little mama, go to B7. Let me see you strut your back to E. Stop. Tear it up. Tear it up. Tear it up. pretty much it so I'll put the chords up as I said right let's dig into the lead guitar parts okay folks the first line goes like this so 
So we're going from 12 to 14 to 12 on the B first of all. Then we go 15 and on the B. Play those first four notes. We're going to pull off 15 to 14. Then go 12, 14 on the B. So if we play that first phrase. One more time. Once more for luck. Okay, go up to 15 on the E. And we're going to go 15, 14, 12. And then we're going to go 14, 15, 14, 12, and 14 on the B. Once more. So play those two phrases together. And we'll finish off going to 12 on the E. 14, 15, 14. That's a kind of hammer on pull off. Like that. Uh, and then 12 on the E. 14 on the B. Then 12, 12 on the E. 14 on the B. 12, 12 on the E. So we put all of that together. Okay folks, there's a bit of hybrid picking in this. I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone if I'm honest, um, but uh, let's see how we go. So uh, the first phrase goes like this. So over the E chords, you hold down the E shape, you're going to play the bottom open E string. Then you're going to play two on the D and open E. Then open both E's. Three on the B. And you use your ring finger to pick that three. Plectrum for the bass strings and use your ring finger for the high strings. Then come up to two on the D. Then pick the two E strings, two on the D, three on the B, open E, open high E, and two on the D. Oh, missed the three. Okay, the next phrase goes like this. So we're going to play open A, two on the D and three on the E, open E and three on the top, two on the D. And then we're going to play open A and three on the top, two on the D, and then five on the B, then open E, and two on the D. Hard to do it slowly. <laughs> okay, let's do the whole bit that we've done so far. Do the E again. Okay, so when we get to the B chord, we're going to use a sort of B bar shape at the 7th fret and we're going to play 7 on the B and 7 on the E. Then 9 on the D and 7 on the B. 7 on the bottom E. 7 on the top, uh, 7 on the B. And then 8 on the G. And 
and then uh, we'll just try that riff a couple of times. It's a wee bit different playing this, the, uh, the G string with the plectrum because normally we only go as far as the D so it's a little bit awkward. Next phrase is seven on the B, seven on the bottom E, nine on the D, seven on the B, and then seven on the top E and bottom E, then eight on the G. Then down to E. Then it moves into the sort of signature riff that we know and love. We're going to play two opens on the E, fours twice on the E, two two four four on the A, two two on the D, back to four four two two on the A, four four on the E. slightly palm muting and I'm using alternate picking and you want to kind of swing it as well then we're going to move up to the A string same riff back down to the E string play this riff over the B which is basically uh, 2, 4, 5 on the A then we pick from 5 to 4 on the A and I pull off 2, 4 on the A move up to D and pull off from 5 to 4 Two, four, five, four, two, four on the A. Just play that riff. Two on the D. Four, five, four. Just a hammer on pull off. Two on the D. Four on the A. And then two on the D twice. It's quite tricky, but you'll get it, I'm sure. Okay, let's go to the solo. Okay, let's move on to the solo. game of two halves the solo I like to think. Starts off on the 12th fret of the E. That's not too hard, you just play a run of five, two sets of five E's. Then we do this lick, which is basically bending up 15, coming down to 12 on the E. 14 on the B. So play the what we've done so far. Then we're going to go 12, 12 on the E. 14, 12, 14 on the B. Now I 
sometimes put an extra 12 in there, but I don't think it's on the record. Then we're going to go 12, 12 on the E. 14, 12, 14 on the B. So we do what we've done so far. And we're going to go 12, 14, 14, and we're going to bend the 14s up and release the second one. Like that. 12, 14 on the B. Do what we've done so far. We're going to go 15, 12, 14, 15 on the E, 14, 12, and 14 on the B. And we'll finish off with this leg. So we're starting with 12 on the E, 15, 15 on the E, 14, 12 on the E, 14 on the B. Then we're going to go 14 on the B, 12, 12 on the E, 14 on the B, 12, 12 on the E. Let's do that first half of the solo. Now, just for speed, sometimes I pull off rather than uh, alternate picking. So the, when you go at the 15, I quite often pull off to the 14. Or maybe even 14, 15, 14. But you'll get it. Just follow the tab, folks, and uh, you'll figure it out. No problem. Right, let's do the second half of the solo. Okay, so the next part of the solo is a sort of run of triplets. And uh, we're going from 4 to 5 on the B and picking open E. It's a little bit tricky, um, if you want to play exactly like Paul Burleson, uh, good luck. <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically just listen to the record and uh, follow the tab, you should get it. But And then he does that another couple of times. Then he goes up to the sort of uh, mini G shape, which is... Eight on the B and seven on the A. Eight on the B and seven on the E. And we're sliding up to that eight, picking the seven. And then we're going to go back down to that first riff that we did. And then we're going to play this. So we're hammering on to two on the B, and then we're picking three and then pulling off to two, open two. Two open on the E, then two, three, hammer on, two open, and then two open on the B. Open A, sorry, open E, two, three, two, pull off, open E, two on the B, open B, two on the top E, sorry, open on the top E, 
two on the B, and then open E. So the sort of second bit goes like this. Like that. Okay folks, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, there's quite a lot in that, so, we'll, um, so just take it slowly and, I'm sh and listen to the record obviously and I'm sure you'll get it. So there we are, that was actually a subscriber request for Steen in Norway, I forgot to mention that. Thank you Steen, and uh, we were featuring the great guitar work of Paul Burleson, one of the slightly unsung heroes of rockabilly. He didn't quite get his moment in the sun, but uh, he was a fantastic guitar player who has had a huge amount of influence on subsequent guitarists who went on to become a lot more famous and wealthy. And that is how life is sometimes, folks. We can't do anything about it. We've just got to move on and uh, be thankful that Paul Burleson uh, came into our lives. Anyway, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time for more rock and roll. Keep rocking.